Hello, I'm Ron Bailey, the Vice President of Business Development for the Greater Jackson County Chamber of Commerce here in Scottsboro. And uh, this is Chamber Chat. Chamber Chat is an opportunity for us to have guests come in from all around our area that are uh, doing things that are important and things that uh, we want to share with uh, our viewing audience. So uh, you have picked a great day to tune into our, our program and learn some interesting things about the Siege of Bridgeport. And uh, let's see, first of all, we've got Judy Matthews, who is the co-chair of our Bridgeport chapter here in uh, Jackson County. And then she has brought along a couple of uh, married couples, uh, the McGraws and the Hills. Uh, we're going to be talking to them today about uh, the uh, Siege of uh, Bridgeport. Joe John, it seems like every year that I've ever gone to uh, the Siege of Bridgeport, you're always there. So you just sort of... Uh, uh, a face for a lot of folks to uh, recognize, and I guess that's because it's on your farm. That's is, correct. Is, this is, is our is 22nd a, year. Well, that was going to be my first question, is how many years have we been doing uh, the Siege of Bridgeport? 22 years. 22 years. Wow. And for a long time, your brother was uh, there with you to help you do that? Right. We lost Jerry in uh, June of 2013. So this will be the second year, or is this the third year with that, Jerry? Third year. Third year. Third year. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, focus on the siege uh, at Bridgeport. This has going on, you know, for you know all those years. How did it get started? Jerry and I were down mowing the yard in the summer one time, and uh, one year, and Glenn Hill and a couple others came down and asked. They had already planned an event in Bridgeport, and the landowner that. Uh, that told them that they could have it there backed out on them in the last minute so about three weeks before the it was scheduled to uh, be uh, they showed up and said can we have it down here and uh, my brother being an avid historian especially histor uh, Civil War historian said sure come on so that, that's how it got started Glenn was uh, one of the original originators of the reenactment in Bridgeport and the date for this year's uh, siege is c coming up here real soon. Right. Uh, the school day will be on Friday, April the 1st, and the reenactments will be on the 2nd and 3rd of April. And Judy will be having a, a chamber uh, breakfast up there on the morning uh, on Friday, I, I believe. Uh, yes, our uh, Chamber of Commerce, our monthly Bridgeport meeting will be, we do the kickoff for the siege every year, and our breakfast is actually on the farm, on the McCraw farm. It will be at 7.30 Friday morning, April 1st. And we invite, we have a lot of food. Our CUB, which is Citizens United for a Better Bridgeport, is going to be doing the food. And if, I might say we're all very good cooks. They certainly <laughs> are. Aren't they, right? They are, that's true. And then, um, as Judge, I mentioned, after the breakfast <clears throat> is the actual kickoff for the siege, uh, or the second kickoff for the siege is the history lesson. But our breakfast will be 7.30 Friday morning, April 1st. And you're invited to attend. Everybody is. We hope everyone will mark that on their calendar and, and come join us uh, on that day. Glenn, tell us a little bit about the folks that will be coming from around the country to uh, uh, to be here for the siege and oh, really? and how to, sort of how do you get in touch with them and and what's sort of the organization that you have that all these people show up uh, with these great looking uniforms and equipment. Well, and I know from what Judy said, I hope they don't think it's an April Fool joke this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were actually reenactors per se before we got started in it. But every year you, your camaraderie will build and you see the same couple maybe two or three weeks down the road. We all get to be a big family. So you and some folks from here went other places for oh, yeah. reenactments yeah. and made a lot of friendships and contacts. I had, a, and, I had an artillery piece at the time, and Joe, John, and Jerry was some of the crew that fired the gun. Mm -hmm. So we got to know a lot of people everywhere, from Florida to Kentucky. And they'd ask us, you know, when are you going to come see us? Oh, yeah, next week. Well, when are you going to come see us? <laughs> you know, April 1st, you know. <laughs> but it's a big family camaraderie. But now Saturday, we do reenact the actual event that occurred at Bridgeport. Uh, there was a Confederate general by the name of Ledbetter 
that helped Bridgeport at the time in April of 62. Mitchell was in Middle Tennessee with the Battle of Franklin, Spring Hill, and such going on. <clears throat> he came to Huntsville in order to capture the bridge at Bridgeport. He never left Huntsville, but he sent his contingent to Bridgeport because the Federal Army was surrounded in Chattanooga. Bridgeport is directly part of the Battle of Bridgeport as far as we had, meaning we, the Confederacy had it choked off and they was trying to get federal supplies into Chattanooga. General Bragg come out of Chattanooga and blowed that bridge up up there. Okay, Mitchell still, he had over 7,000 men that come up in there. Came and, right through Scottsboro. Yeah, Ledbetter was sitting on Battery Hill, what we call Battery Hill now. The book, O.R. says it's 500 uh, feet from the west end of the West Bridge, is where they describe it in the Lars, which is Battery Hill. Uh, it was mis, it's like today, it was miscommunication. He didn't have a 450 men up there and two guns. Mitchell come down up there with 7,000 and a whole complement of artillery. So it occurred in April of 62, which they captured around 300 plus, whatever. They was carried down south towards Stevenson area. Uh, there was a contingent that escaped towards Chattanooga, got away. The two guns were captured later on by the Federal Army. But from April of 62, which is recorded as siege, not battle. But I heard this one time, one time. If a man gets killed in a siege or a battle, it was his big battle. You think about that, that's deep. But there was, you know, 20 something killed up on Battery Hill. That was their big battle, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, back to this quickie. We do reenact that scene on Saturday. The Federal Army will win on Saturday. Y'all didn't hear me say that. <laughs> but uh, on Sunday, we'll turn the scenario around to where the Confederacy will win and they hold the fort till next year. Mm. So that's kind of a plan we just all got up on our own down there. But we have people from Florida. There's a real contingent comes out of Florida every year. Um, there's I mean, Georgia people, uh, infantry comes out of Georgia, Chattanooga, anybody that's in driving distance will come. And we don't just come down there and sit down. We're authentically dressed, authentically sleeping. The tents are authentic. In fact, if you're eating a hamburger from whoever, you got to put it up if you see somebody come and get the you know, hard tack out. So we try to do a first person impression to keep it as authentic as we can. And back to the school day, we do all stations, what we call stations. Uh, we'll have an artillery demo, we have an infantry demo, cavalry demo, and we just show the children what it really looked like and really was instead of TV. Mm -hmm. You know, Hollywood and TV's ruined it. Uh, them men walk around barefooted hungry, you know, didn't know when their next meal or who's gonna get shot. I think in my personal feeling, it was the worst war the United States has ever in. You know, and now they've got the figures up around 800 and something thousand instead of 650,000. Uh, it's devastating. Uh, the fact of the matter is, there wasn't nothing civil war about it. It was a war between the states, so therefore it's not civil. Mm -hmm. We teach that to the school kids, you know, when they come up. But, you know, come on down. We have, after the event, we might cook a steak on the outside on the farm. You know, have a good time. A lot of, all of us are real good friends, you know. And Mar Marilyn, is, uh, she's your helper in uh, trying to stay in touch with these folks and make sure that... Yeah, I start in October sending out stuff, trying to get a hold of the people to get them in here. We send out the papers and work. Me and Gail run us the, the, both of the gates on it. Uh, which we have to register them in to know who's there. They all have to come through my gate the reenactors and stuff, all the public goes through Gail's Gate. So they have to come through and sign a paper with me before they go on the farm. Well, you, you ladies are in dress of the of the period uh, during the reenactment, are you not? Gail's more than I am anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of sit, I have to, I sit back there and have to be renting out, but I kinda do, sit I do. It's hard to sit in a chair in a hoop. It, it is, yeah. but sometimes I do. The hoop comes yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, the hoop comes up, so. But we do. We try to. We try to be as authentic as possible. Good. Good. Gail, 
the uh, role that you play in uh, helping uh, Joe John with uh, uh, the the farm and th that kind of thing. Tell us how long you've been doing it and what pretty much what your role is. Uh, well, what I do is the front gate, and like uh, the prices is like uh, three, four, and five, uh, three for students, four for seniors, and five for adults. And um, we're the first one to greet everyone in, and the troops, they come through Maryland's gate, and then all the public is through there. How do you communicate with the school systems, the, the, the education day when the kids come, uh, of being able to either schedule that or notify them and, and, and that kind of thing? That sounds like a real task to me. Maryland, uh -huh. Maryland sends out the pamphlets and all to all the surrounding schools, and then um, it's just like a dollar on school day the students are just a dollar and the kids that can't pay that's we don't charge you know it's just we try to get as many children educated as you know as we can well a good time well i want to talk about it some more that's uh, that's all we're going to have uh, time for on this segment but we're going to pause here for a few commercials and then we'll be right back and uh, uh, talk some more about the siege of bridgeport <laughs> 